Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So we still got Galaxy Note 9 in house. We're going to have it around for a while but we know you're about to get yours or depending on when you're watching this video you may have just gotten yours and when you get it we we want you to know what to do right away set it up out of the box the best possible way so that moving forward you just get the most out of it and we do that by offering you the first 10 things to do so here's the first 10 things to do with your galaxy note 9 First thing we'll do, and we almost always do, is talk about, well, the lock screen. So lock screen, you, you just need to secure this bad boy. And so in order to do that, we go through this. And, and it'll actually, when you do your initial setup, it may ask you to set up most of this stuff. But if you skip it because you're impatient or something, this is what we do. We jump into the phone, go into settings, and then we're first actually going to go into, well, we'll start with lock screen. And so when you choose a screen lock type, obviously choose something that you think will be the best for you. I often go pattern because it's easy to just swipe in and out of a phone but there's pin or password swipe just has no security which it tells you right there so I, I wouldn't choose that and then none obviously is a bad option as well uh, what I do is set up a pattern or pin I typically go pattern so once you set that up then you start doing some other stuff now you can log into your phone every time by just doing pattern or pin but there's some ways Samsung allows you to do it even quicker uh, to sort of bypass that and so you do that with biometrics so biometrics are well there's four options the the first one well, I should say the last one on the list here is fingerprints you should definitely set that up that's the fingerprint reader there on the back of the phone and just tapping your finger on there should unlock your phone that's faster than typing a pin so uh, or doing a pattern so after that though there's some other stuff you got facial recognition and iris scanning as well which is pretty standard for note phones at this point or there's this combo option called intelligence scan so I went ahead and set that up and I'm also using fingerprints because yes you can use all of the stuff at once so you've got your screen lock set up then we're actually going to go back a couple pages to biometrics and security and jump in there and this is where we set up all of the fingerprints we want so we can go into fingerprints here and use your pattern or, or pin and, and then we can set up multiple fingerprints uh since it's on the back i set up both index fingers because you never know which hand you're going to be holding it in and that's the finger that kind of rests up there the, the the best but you may want to do middle fingers or thumbs or something like that as well uh kind of up to you on that one so i set up those two you can decide from there if you wanted to unlock your phone or not which you can see i do have set up there and uh let's jack up the brightness there samsung okay uh from there though so fingerprints and i mentioned i use intelligence scan so if you go to intelligence scan and you set it up it'll scan your face so that it learns your face and then it'll also scan your irises so that it learns your irises now what that does once that's all set up is well when you go to your lock screen like this you'll notice there's some stuff up there an icon flipping between face and eyes and what it's trying to do is it wants me to look in there so it'll unlock with either my face or my eyes you can see i twisted it towards me and it says no irises detected i've got glasses on at the moment which it doesn't exactly love and i'm also behind a microphone so it's not really going to scan my face but I can just put my finger on there and the fingerprint works. So you've got multiple options. So if you set up fingerprints and intelligence scan and a secure pattern or pin, you've got all sorts of levels of security, but the face stuff and the finger is how you do it very quickly. So I, I know this is a long drawn out explanation here, but uh, if we lock, put a finger on there, you can see it unlocks. And th so far this has been one of the fastest fingerprint readers I've seen from Samsung in a while. All right, from there, let's jump past, uh, well actually we're gonna kind of stick with the lock screen and I wanna talk about this stuff. So if you can see that there, this is our always on display. So always on display, really handy feature that shows you uh, time date if you have notifications that stuff it should be on out of the box and there may be a tutorial on how to really go further and set that up uh, if it's not you go back into settings and go back into lock screen this is not in the the display settings section which is weird it, it is actually in lock screen so right here always on display check that box to on if you want tap on it and you get to decide when you want it to show what you want it to show uh just the home button or i'm sorry the home button and clock which you can see both there just the clock with no home button or just the home button with no clock i i leave both on um, you can have it always show um, or you can set a schedule for when you do and do not want it to show i leave mine on all the time so that in the middle of the night i can just roll over and check the time but you can set a schedule in case you don't want it to even do that um, so i've got a schedule there if you check auto brightness it'll actually try to dim and lower the brightness of it depending on your setting so you might want to leave that on as well uh, from there there's even more stuff you can adjust though so this section here clock style 
you can adjust the clock style you'll probably have this one out of the box which i typically prefer but there's also this minimal guy uh there's a whole bunch of different options in here you can really make it look uh uh to your own personal taste even throwing in themes with i think that's a bunny you can do animated gifs and stuff like that so i'm gonna go with that guy uh you can change the color of the text as well so you can see now i have a coralish pinkish clock so you can adjust some of these things too there's a whole bunch of stuff you can change in here um if you go to lock screen, you can actually adjust some additional stuff, or this at least shows you what is on your lock screen. So always on displays when your screen is off. Lock screen is when you wake your phone and you're still looking at your lock screen. So you can actually change the clock on that also into something different. So you can have two different styles between them uh, and change the font here as well. So lots of stuff to do in there. Um, and this is sort of where you find it. All right, so from there, let's uh, let's talk about some home screen stuff. Now, setting up your home screen is, is just one of those things that can be really tedious and take a long time to get right. So you will often do it immediately out of the box, and then hopefully you just do it properly the first time so that you just never have to do it again. And and I'm going to show you on Samsung's launcher because this is what comes on the phone. And that's basically Samsung, Samsung recommending you use that, but there are plenty of third-party ones. Nova launcher, action launcher. There's some knockoff pixel launcher options. Feel free to check those out if this is just not working for you. Uh, so what, where we're going to start first, it was actually a notification panel and then we'll come back. Um, but this is sort of that home setup. So notification panel, what I really want to show you is this stuff up here. These are all your shortcuts to your most important settings, or at least they often are. And so what I want to make sure you first know how to do is adjust these first six. First six are when you get that first swipe down, those first six that you may use a bunch. So toggling Wi-Fi on, off and on for me auto rotate do not disturb nightlight battery and the little flashlight shortcut those are the settings i use the most so you want to adjust this setup by tapping this little menu and doing button order and then from here you can long press drag and drop items to be where you want them and so again i set up my first or my favorite six in those first six slots and then after that you kind of just do whatever you want to do there's multiple pages up here so you can really really add a lot of different options up here and when you're done you just click done some other things to keep in mind are there are there is a brightness slider you can see it's not showing with a single swipe down second swipe down does allow it to show but if i actually tap this little arrow and i say show control on top now with a single swipe it is there so if you constantly uh tweak your uh, your brightness slider you may want to have it show in this view as well uh some other things if you want to go into bluetooth controls if you long press on those they will actually take you into um, that shortcut same thing works with like wi-fi if i long press on that it takes me into wi-fi settings so if you need more settings that is the quickest way to get into those um, you can also tap on the actual word wi-fi or say like the word bluetooth and it'll show you some of those settings without actually going fully into those settings um, and then you turn them off and on just by tapping on the icon up top hope that makes sense anyway so get your notification panel set up it is uh it's an important thing so uh back home though let's talk about how to set this up so this is samsung's launcher you swipe it up that gets you into your app drawer and then you swipe left to right to get into your apps um there's also a setting where if i swipe down i can bring down that notification panel without having to go all the way up here you'll notice if i swipe down right here see that it comes down uh that's not actually on out of the box so if i long press here and go into home screen settings there is a quick open notification panel setting i would i would toggle that on if i toggle that off and i swipe down it actually opens the app drawer which so you can go up or down that that that's weird to me so again go into home screen settings and, and turn that on uh, from here you can adjust grid sizes and things like that you can decide if you want app badges to be on icons or if you want your newly installed apps to just automatically go onto your home screen that sort of thing uh, feel free to dive into some of these settings but when you're actually on this page you can pinch and this will allow you to edit all of these panels so if i just want to get rid of a panel there is an actual trash button up there um, and same thing here so you can just delete an entire panel so out of the box like i had a bunch of bloatware on this second page i just hit the trash button and it wiped it all out and then you can hit this plus to start a new fresh screen if you want or get rid of it you can make this one your home screen uh instead of maybe this one i do want that as that and then of course over here is where you decide if you want to use a bixby panel or not so show you that if we go home here and uh we swipe over you do have a bixby panel that you'll set up we'll talk more about bixby in just a little bit but if you do not want that panel at all you just pinch swipe over turn it off 
And now if I swipe that way, there is no Bixby panel. Uh, to adjust things, obviously long press an icon and you can just drag it wherever you want and drop it someplace. You can long press to get some other shortcuts like removing it from home. If you want to uninstall the app, this is probably about the quickest way to do it. Um, you'll see some of those app shortcuts by long pressing on apps that support it. And there's also a way to select multiple items. You tap that and it goes into this select all mode where you can then remove them all from a home or even create a folder out of all of those things you've selected. To get out of that, you just hit back. Uh, so one quick shortcut there, uh, if you swipe up in here and let's say you want to add an app to your home, uh, Samsung kind of makes this a little more difficult than is you long press and you can drag it to these blue areas or just kind of hold it for a little while. And then eventually it will go home and then let you add it. Um, if you want to start adding folders quickly, what I recommend doing is long press and then do select items and then just grab a whole bunch of items that you want to make into a folder and then create folder and then name it whatever you want. And now you'll have a folder and you can grab that then and then drag that home. And now you have a folder full of all of your favorite apps or whatever you've created right there. That's probably the quickest way to do it. To get rid of it, you just delete folder. So that's kind of your home screen experience. That's that's a that's a brief overview in case you didn't know exactly how any of that worked. Just remember the pinch, remember the long press to get in some other settings like changing your wallpaper, widgets and themes, swiping up, turning that setting on to swipe down to get into there so you don't have to reach all the way up and uh you should be pretty good to go from home, especially once you've set up that notification panel as well. From there, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Bixby. I know I brought it up, and if I swipe over, well, I still have it off. So let's pinch over, turn Bixby on. So Bixby, this is obviously Samsung's assistant. Uh, they've changed it a little bit with the Note 9. In fact, they've changed it quite a bit, and we'll probably do some sort of overview of it uh, here in the future. But Bixby is there, and you have a, a Bixby panel that shows your calendar if you want, reminders that can connect to Twitter and Spotify and all of this stuff to just show you information like your gallery where you take pictures of your own hand. So it's it's kind of got a lot. It's, it's, a, it, it's not my favorite, but it is there in case you want to use that. Um, the other thing is you do have a Bixby button. So this phone has a Bixby button. And if you press that button, it opens Bixby. And it asks what you want to do with it. It's voice controlled. Um, it can control settings and things like that on your phone. It can get you the weather. And you can see here, it says I can book hotels. And with Bixby Vision, I can scan stuff or whatever. So Bixby hasn't changed a ton in terms of just being Google or Samsung's assistant. But they, they're trying to update the UI and maybe make it slightly more simplified than it used to be. Uh, so I, I personally do not use it. Um, I will turn this panel off when I'm done with this video and not really use it ever again. Uh, but if you do tap it, it, the button, it will open Bixby. And from there, I can tap this button and say, check the weather or something like that. I don't have an internet connection at the moment. but And it'll, it'll show me that stuff. Uh, to get going, what you'll want to do is tap on the little settings or the menu button up here and go into settings and set up how you want to use Bixby. Do you want it to just be with the button that launches it? That's fine. Um, do you want it to listen to you at all times so you can constantly uh, say, hi, Bixby, to turn it on? That's kind of up to you. Um, I do have mine set right now to do a voice wake up because I'm testing it. So if I do say that hot word, it will launch Bixby and then go into uh, uh, allowing me to run commands and things like that. So uh, you can also allow it to run while your phone is locked. Um, you can decide if you want to get voice responses from Bixby uh, or if you only want to get those when you have, say, like a Bluetooth device or headphones set up. So there's some things to set up in here. One thing you can't do, at least at the time of this video, is turn that button off. So in previous Samsung phones, they did allow you to disable that button from actually working. As far as I can tell in this version, uh, I cannot turn that off. There is no setting to turn that off, and I have bumped it a ton, and it will fire up no matter what you're doing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, here's Bixby. I'll let you guys decide if you want to use it, but those are just kind of the general settings. Tap the button, go in here, go into settings, and kind of set up the voice style you want. And again, there's just no way to turn off that dang button at this moment. Uh, that's Bixby. From there, let's actually talk about a feature you probably will get some use out of that's unique to this phone, and that's this guy right here, the S Pen. So as I mentioned in our unboxing video, the S Pen is, is quite powerful with some new features in this particular Note device. It has Bluetooth, has a battery inside, but it has Bluetooth, so you can do some remote things. Obviously, it's just a very cool tool and toy that only the Note phones really have. So let, let's talk about how to set this up. We go into settings in advanced features and there is S Pen right up at the top. So in here, 
let, let, let's dive into some of this. S Pen Remote is the new stuff. So when you go in there, you'll see right there it says it's available and it has 100% battery. Remember, just sliding it in there will connect it. If it ever says it's disconnected, it also charges it up nicely. Uh, so some of the cool things in here are, well, you can program it to hold this button down to launch an app. Right now it's set up to launch the camera. So if I hold, press this button, it will launch the camera. And this is an app that's built to use the remote features. So if I tap on this, it'll take a picture and you can see it just did that. If I double tap it, it'll flip over to uh, selfie mode and then you can take remote selfies and that kind of stuff. Um, th that's just one of the cool features. Some other stuff in here, uh, if you're in the gallery and you want to just kind of look at a slideshow of images, you can just tap the button and it'll just go from photo to photo. Um, you can set up the voice recorder to work by pressing this as well. If you're in that voice recorder app, there's even some access with Chrome where you can hit back to go back a, a page if you're on a page or double press to go forward. So there are some Google apps that actually do work with the remote features on this pen, which is kind of cool. So that's S Pen Remote. Uh, you should definitely set that up because it's really, really unique and one of the new big features here. Uh, from, from there, there's some other stuff. So unlock with S Pen Remote. So if you pull this out, and click this button, it will actually unlock your phone. So if you have it sitting over here and you, you grab it and you wanna unlock your phone, you can just tap this button and it should unlock it. Might be something to explore. Uh, from there, there's just lots of other stuff like screen off memo allows you to write on the screen, which I'll show you in a second uh, without actually turning your phone on, just pulling the pen out when it's in a locked state. Uh, but there's some other stuff in here too, like air view is this little thing where you hover the pen near the screen and it actually shows you um, like a little mouse pointer that's on there. Um, there is this thing right here, which is air command. So every time you pull the pen out, air command pops up if you want it to. And within air command, you just have shortcuts to, well, whatever you want. Most of them are pen features like smart selecting, which is kind of like cropping something on your screen. Uh, if you just want to screen, write, If you want to create one of those fancy live messages that you can then send to someone, that's what that is. There's some other things in here, but you could just add apps in here as well. Like if I just wanted to, like, let's say, pull up Google really quickly with my pen, I could choose, you know, like the Google app. And now that's in there. So if I go in here, I can just tap right there and that'll launch Google. So there's some other things you can do with uh, with Air Command other than just S Pen stuff. Um, and then you can turn this floating icon off or not. And you can obviously move it around or remove it, that sort of thing. Um, you can have air command not open when you do that you can set an alarm so that when you walk away with your s pen or you leave it or something like that it'll actually your phone will beep at you there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in here but this is the cool guy this is what makes the notes so unique so i highly recommend you uh you go through and set some of this stuff up um we're gonna slide this back in just to show you this uh this memo or screen off memo or whatever it's called so you just pop it out and you can actually just draw and write notes right um you can actually tap this down arrow and get multiple pages in case you're just writing pages and pages of notes and if you save those into your notes that actually goes into the notes app and you can access those later um if i click this it should unlock it except i do have lots of screen stuff let's see um, that's just going to launch the camera it's supposed to be able to unlock but uh it doesn't seem to want to do that, probably because I have all this biometric stuff. Anyway, you're supposed to be able to unlock your phone by pressing it. Either way, that's the S Pen stuff. Uh, definitely, definitely give that stuff a look. It's it's just, you might as well use it. It's there. It's partly why you buy the Note, right? Moving on from the Note, let's talk a little bit about the camera. So this phone, as you guys know, has a dual camera. Uh, one's a zoom, one is a wide angle with dual aperture. So very powerful camera. Samsung has been doing some of the best cameras for a really long time now. So the quickest way to always remember how to get in there is just double double tapping the power button that will launch the camera and you can do that from wherever if the phone is locked if you're in google chrome if you're doing something else you can always just double tap that and it'll open up the camera so once you're in the camera just general navigation you first start in auto mode but you can see there's a whole bunch of different modes up top there and to get between those you just swipe left to right so live focus that's your your bokeh portrait mode and you can adjust the amount of background blur and bokeh down here um, slide over there is a pro mode which is kind of cool especially since there's a dual aperture you can actually manually switch between f24 and f15 so some really nice controls in there uh, you have panorama modes and you have super slow-mo modes and ar emoji if you care so you just slide between all of those modes just by doing that um, some other settings to keep in mind there you do have a zoom button down here so there is a two time zoom button if you just tap that it'll 
zoom in two times. I'll just show you here. So you can have it be wide angle, tap that, and it will actually zoom in. So that is there. Uh, if we go in settings, just a couple of things to keep in mind. You may want to adjust your video size. Out of the box, it will be at full HD. You may want to go at 4K or 60 frames 4K. Whatever you want to do, I always up mine to 4K. Uh, if we go back here, uh, auto HDR, you certainly want to be on. One thing you may not want to be on though is this scene optimizer. So what Samsung's doing is if the scene optimizer is on and you take a picture or go to take a picture, it tries to use AI, use quotes there to check out what you're shooting, whether that's food, flowers, portraits, animals, mountains, beaches, and then it's going to try to auto adjust the picture depending on what it thinks might look great. Uh, it's probably going to overdo it, make everything too vibrant and contrasty and weird. So it's up to you, but I would play with it for a while and see if you like what it's doing to your photos. If you don't like what it's doing, just turn that bad boy off right there. Um, some other things are you can adjust the video size of your front camera as well, all the way up to QHD at this point. Um, you do have grid line options. There's video stabilization you can turn off and on. And uh, the quick launch thing, which is the double tap power button, make sure that's on for sure. And you know, that's kind of it. Oh, one other little tip. If you hold the camera button down, you can actually have it take a, a burst of shots, which is kind of cool. I don't know there's a lot of phones that do that, but Samsung does that. So anyway, that's just some quick camera tricks. Uh, make sure you kind of know the basics there. Oh, one other thing, if we slide left and right, this is actually a good way to zoom. Um, rather than just going full 2x, you can kind of drag the shutter button back and forth and it will zoom. Uh, yeah, the camera. Now that you're familiar with the camera, let's uh, let's actually go back into settings and I'm gonna go into display settings for the first time. Uh, there's a lot of options in here that Samsung gives you to really get your display tuned the way you want it. So go in here. First of all, turn on auto brightness so it adjusts brightness depending on lighting conditions around you. It's a good one to have. Blue light filter is uh, it's kind of like your night light filter. It makes everything this sort of uh, amberish color to ease strain on your eyes. You should be familiar with that. I usually keep a shortcut to it right up there. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can set a custom schedule to just have it turn on like say at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, like I also have doing. So blue light filter, that's why you should use that, especially if you use your phone before you go to bed. Uh, from there, it's screen mode. I would go into and decide kind of what you want. Adaptive display kind of tries to change the color balance um, depending on scene or where you're at. Sometimes I feel like it makes the screen look way too warm for my eye. So I often go with basic, which just kind of doesn't do anything to the screen. Uh, there's also a cinema mode and a photo mode and so feel free to play with these but you can see even from adaptive to basic right now basics warmer than adaptive is but i feel like adaptive will switch to warmer uh depending on what i'm doing but adaptive does give you some other options which basic doesn't so anyway screen mode just find a, a picture that looks pretty to your eye um out of the box my phone this phone in particular was set at full hd since this is a quad hd display i went and ramped that up you may want to do that uh if we scroll down here this phone does have an edge screen, which uh, if I turn this on, you should get a little panel that I can swipe out here to get into some edge stuff. I have never used the edge stuff in any Samsung phone ever, so I often turn that off. And so I'm going to turn it off. And if you want to learn more about the edge panel, we'll talk more about it in our tips and tricks. Um, so that is where you adjust it, at least in display. Uh, one other thing I often do is in navigation bar button layout out of the box, you will have the back button on the right side, which is how Samsung's done it for pretty much ever. I'm a stock Android kind of guy and stock Android puts the back button on the left. So I actually adjust that and flip those two buttons. Just keep that in mind in case uh, you didn't know how that works. I also turn this box on for unlock with home button. So if I'm actually here and say my smart lock is actually working, I can just long press the home button and it should unlock my phone. But since Google smart lock never works anymore, that is what it is. Uh, that's pretty much it for display settings. Uh, from there, we'll back out and go back into those advanced features. So in advanced features, that was where the S Pen stuff was, right? Well, there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff in here. Like you might want to check out one-handed mode where I can do this gesture from the bottom right corner or left corner, and it goes into a one-handed mode. So this phone is large. One-handed modes actually kind of come in handy where it shrinks the phone down into this mini screen that you can just interact with it probably while you're just using one hand. Uh, you can switch sides on that if you want. Want to see now i'm using my left hand and then to get out of that you just tap in the space over there and that moves you out of that it's just kind of one of those cool ones um 
quick launch the camera that shortcut is also in there um, there's a palm swipe to do screenshots if you want when you swipe across i don't like it so i turn it off but it is there direct call if you have a contact up and you just hold the phone up to your ear it will call them uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you just should dive into i just kind of wanted to point out advanced features um, there's some fun stuff. Samsung does some fun stuff in here that no one else does. So definitely dive right into there. Uh, and then finally, the last of the first 10 things I would do is say, uh, check out a new theme. So the theme that comes out of the box is this guy with heavy white, lots of blue, not a lot of color. Uh, I tend to like darker ones. I also like the pixel themes that are available out there because I like the look of stock Android much more than I like the look of Samsung's navigation buttons and things like that. So uh, I was in settings, went into themes, and if I tap into themes down here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of different themes. Uh, again, I don't have network settings on, but you can search through themes, thumb through themes, find one that you think looks cool, and then you'll be able to download that. And then once you download it, it'll ask you to apply it. You can see I've got one up here, which is this pixelized theme, which I typically put on every Samsung phone and I just click apply and that will apply that it will change your wallpaper so keep that in mind in case you want to because you have a favorite wallpaper make sure you kind of save that somewhere before doing this uh, but there you go now I have a new theme and you can see I've got those pixel style buttons down there on the bottom if I swipe my notification area I do have a dark panel up here uh, and if I go into settings those are now dark as well I'm a big ease the eye strain kind of guy so uh that's pretty much it there is so much more we probably could have made this a first 20 things to do with your note but that should really get you going uh in the right direction we'll have tips and tricks coming we're gonna have some s pen tips and tricks as well uh but again that should get you going with the note 9 in pocket uh if you got comments questions let us know we're joined life peace